everybody and a very happy Christmas to you all. And happy Christmas to you. It's lovely to be gathering together to celebrate this Christmas communion. I'm John Rees and I'm the rector of the Canalside Churches near Trowbridge, serving the villages of Hilperton, Staverton, Semington and Wadden. And I'm sharing leading this service with the Reverend Joy Olbone and uh, a number of other people from our churches. We begin with a greeting. I bring you good news of great joy. A Saviour has been born to you today. Alleluia. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. Alleluia. He is Christ the Lord. Alleluia. We worship and adore him. Alleluia. And we continue with our opening carol. O come all ye faithful. Do sing up. And of course we can sing the last verse.
now to that time when we light our Advent wreath. And today we get to light all the candles. God our Father, today the Saviour is born and those who live in darkness are seeing a great light. Help us who greet the birth of Christ with joy to live in the light of your Son and to share the good news of your love. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the light who has come into the world. Lord Jesus, light of light, you have come among us. Help us who live by your light to shine as lights in your world. Glory to God in the highest. And we now light all of the candles on our Advent wreath. Happy Christmas, everybody. We come now to that time when we pause and we say sorry to God. Hear the words of the angel to Joseph. You shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Therefore let us seek the forgiveness of God through Jesus, the Saviour of the world. Lord of grace and truth, we confess our unworthiness to stand in your presence as your children. Forgive and heal us. The Virgin Mary accepted your call to be the mother of Jesus. Forgive, forgive our, our disobedience, disobedience to your will. Forgive and heal us. Your Son, our Saviour, was born in poverty in a manger. Forgive, forgive our greed and, and rejection of your ways. Forgive and heal us. The shepherds left their flocks to go to Bethlehem. Forgive, forgive our self-interest and, and lack of vision. Forgive, forgive and heal us. The wise men followed the star to find Jesus the King. Forgive, forgive our, our reluctance to seek you. you. Forgive, forgive and, and heal us. And knowing how God does indeed forgive us, we receive his forgiveness. May God who loved the world so much that he sent his son to be our saviour, forgive you for your sins and make you holy to serve him in the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
ourselves in that special prayer for today, the collect. Lord Jesus Christ, your birth at Bethlehem draws us to kneel in wonder at heaven touching earth. Accept our heartfelt praise as we worship you, our Saviour and our eternal God. Amen. Amen. And we now have our readings from Marilyn and Claire. And then after that, Jill will bring us our talk. A reading from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2 to 7. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. For those who live in a land of deep darkness, a light will shine. You will enlarge the nation of Israel and its people will rejoice. They will rejoice before you as people rejoice at harvest. And like warriors dividing the plunder. For you will break the yoke of their slavery and lift the heavy burden from their shoulders. You will break the oppressor's rod just as you did when you destroyed the army of Midian the boots of the warrior and the uniforms bloodstained by war will all be burnt. They will be fuel for the fire. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor. Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and its peace will never end. He will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. The passionate commitment of the Lord of heaven's armies will make this happen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. The word became flesh and dwelt among us and we have seen his glory. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for their census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea. David's ancient home. He travelled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no lodging available for them. That night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly the angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Saviour, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem the city of David. And you will recognise him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. Suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth 
to those with whom God is pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph. And there was the baby lying in a manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished. But Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. It was at night that it happened, out of the dark as well as out of the blue, that a strange, inexplicable event occurred. They were just simply going about their routine work, their nightly task of tending the flock, protecting and caring for them. And there it was. A strange yet glorious, glittering, gleaming array of lights. Not like the stars, but so dazzling that it made them stop dead in their tracks. So transfixed that it took their breath away. To the least expected people, in the least expected way, the least expected event happened. And it stayed with them. There are some beautiful experiences we can have in life that happen to us, that send shivers down our spine, or give us goosebumps, or make us feel like our hair is standing on end. And they stay with us. We don't forget because they have a profound effect on us. These are good experiences, but there are also events that happen which terrify us, creating anxiety and fear. As a world, a puzzling virus mysteriously appeared at the start of the year, which has gripped us all. It has wreaked havoc and made people afraid. And although we have been so brave, this experience will stay with us and we will have learnt new things through this. In and through this fearful happening, we so need to hear the words of the angels or the shepherds. Don't be afraid. The Lord is here. The shepherds' experience that night was amazing, mystifying, terrifying too, as their encounter with this strange phenomenon emerges out of the night sky. Don't be afraid. It is good news, nothing to fear. An exciting event has taken place, and they are wanted, needed, invited to be part of this. What is this, they wonder, and what does it mean for us? At first, they simply don't know what to do. Then they realise they have to go. It is clear, clear as the night sky. So they abandon their flock and leave in haste to play their part in God's story of love. Shepherds are outsiders. They are nomads. They are literally out there, out of sight, outside civilised society. Shepherds appear within the pages of the Bible as being watchkeepers and with a keen pastoral task. If one of the sheep goes missing, the shepherd will go in search of it, for each sheep matters to them. They were the type of people who can notice the things of God. So no wonder they were the first to witness the amazing miracle of God being born into the world, born in humble and lowly circumstances. God as one of us. Those on the margins, those with no power, prestige or position of influence are perfectly placed to hear and see an astounding work of God and more significantly God sees them as being as important as everyone else. These shepherds foreshadow what the shepherd, the good shepherd, Jesus, this babe in the manger, yet God, will seek to do in his life. And they know, they simply know that this message they receive on this most holy night is good news, not just for them, but for all people. And that what they witness definitely has to be shared. 
And so that's what they do. They are to be witnesses and it begins immediately. This night, this starry, starry night, when the sky was aglow with bright glittering light, everything changed for them, for their lives had been touched by God's love. No longer strangers, outcasts, unknowns, now accepted, respected and friends. And so, here we are. God is here and so are we. And we are wanted, needed, invited to be part of this exciting event right now. What is this? And what does it mean for us? And what are we to do? Know that God welcomes us all. The invitation is for everyone to discover and experience God born as one of us. We too are part of God's story of love. The God who meets with us in unexpected places. The God who searches for the one in order to find us and welcomes us. The God who invites us to be witnesses. May we be open to those inexplicable experiences so that these mysterious moments stay with us, affect us and prompt us to share. And as we reflect on what Jill said, let us declare our faith in God. And we say together, we, we believe, believe in, in God the Father, Father from, from whom, whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I now invite Stuart to bring us our prayers of intercession. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. We pray you, Lord to purify our hearts, that they may be worthy to be your dwelling place. Let us never fail to find room for you. Come, abide in us, that we also may abide in you. For at this time, you were born into the world for us and you live and reign king of kings lord of lords now and forever amen O holy child of bethlehem whose parents found no room in the inn we pray for all who are homeless Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy child of Bethlehem, born in a stable, we pray for all who are living in poverty. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O holy child of Bethlehem, rejected stranger, we pray for all who are lost and all who are alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O holy child of Bethlehem, whom Herod sought to kill. We pray for all who are in danger and for all who are persecuted. Lord, 
in your mercy, hear our prayer. O holy child of Bethlehem, a refugee in Egypt, we pray for all refugees, for all who are far from home, for all who seek refuge. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O holy child of Bethlehem, whose followers came together in your church, we ask today for your blessing on the church in the benefits of the Lavingtons, Cheverells and Easterton, and on their two primary schools. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O holy child of Bethlehem, in you the Eternal was pleased to dwell. Help us, we pray, to see the divine image in people everywhere. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O holy child of Bethlehem, who in your ministry healed many and forgave many, be present with all who are unwell, in trouble of any kind, or need forgiveness. We pray particularly today for those suffering from the effects of the coronavirus. Place your healing hand upon them. Give them a firm trust in your goodness and help those who minister to them. And we pray, Lord, that you will put an end to this pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We praise you, Lord God, for your faithful servants in every age. And we pray that we, with all who have died in the faith of Christ, may be brought to a joyful resurrection and the fulfillment of your eternal kingdom, rejoicing in the fellowship of all your saints, we commend ourselves and each other to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We come now to that time when we share the peace. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name shall be called the Prince of Peace. The peace of our Lord be with you all. And also with you. So let us offer one another a sign of peace, and wherever you are, we wish you peace at this Christmas time. So peace be with you all. Bye. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. All glory and honour be yours always and everywhere, mighty Creator, ever-living God. We give you thanks and praise for your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, who for love of our fallen race humbled himself, was born of a Virgin Mary by the power of your Spirit, and lived as one of us. In the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have caused his light to shine in our hearts, to give knowledge of your glory in the face of Jesus Christ. In him we see our God made visible, and so are caught up in the love of the God we cannot see. Therefore, with all the angels of heaven, we lift our voices to proclaim the glory of your name and sing our joyful hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread and gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of a new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, Help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with Michael, Mary, George and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. So let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. God, God here among us, light in the midst of us, Bring us to light and life. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. The body of Christ, broken for you and for many. Amen. The blood of Christ, shed for you and for many. Amen. Thank you. We invite you to join in a prayer of spiritual communion. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart, O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother. May I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. And we continue with the post-communion prayer. Jesus, Son of Mary, Son of God, we have joined the worship of the angels. May we never lose that heavenly vision. Like the shepherds, we have rejoiced at the news of your birth. Help us to proclaim that message in word and deed to your praise and glory. Amen. And we now sing our final carol, Heart the Herald Angels Sing.
We're very nearly at the end of this Christmas service, but before a final blessing, Joy and I would like to thank everybody who shared in this service with us. Marilyn and Claire for the readings, Jill for bringing us the talk, Stuart for leading our intercessions, James as always for the music and for his editing, and for everyone who made the church look so lovely this Christmas and for our warden team who worked so hard this Christmas too. And thank you to all of you watching this at home. Joy and I have found it a real privilege to lead this most unusual of Christmases uh, with, that, with everyone, those who we've met and those who we know are what, who are watching at home. And so to our final blessing. May the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Joseph and Mary, and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas and forevermore. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you this Christmas time and always. Amen. Go in peace. Proclaim the word made flesh. Glory, thanks, thanks and praise, praise to God. God. Amen. Amen.